85 years ago, something magical happened. Something that changed everything about animation. This tutorial is my tribute to a legacy. Today, we'll be making the fairest skin of them all. Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I just wanted to give you a heads up what things I'm hoping to accomplish today with you. That will include some of the very basic texture painting, where I think it's important to add some makeup effects like rosy noses and rosy cheeks. And we're also going to briefly cover some of the nodes you can do to get this uh, skin pore effect on your characters, which really does help to enhance your characters. Without further ado, let's just begin. So the first thing I'm going to do for my character, because I'm assuming you guys are doing the same, is I'm going to apply a new texture. So we're going to start from scratch so I can guide you guys through it as best as I can. After you have added a new texture to your skin, is we're going to head over up here to the shading tab. So you should see that you have a new texture. And if you don't see that, just you should be able to just hover here and click a plus sign to add a new texture. Now that we see our principled BSDF, we're going to do shift A, search, and just type image. And then we're looking for this image texture. So I'm going to place the image texture. And now I'm just going to hit new. I've already messed uh, with the dimensions of my texture. However, my guess is your guys' texture will say 1024 by 1024. So if it says that, either just type in 2048 or you can also do 1024 and then times 2. Then it'll get you to 2048. And now another thing we're going to want to do is for the base color for our image texture, try and make it the skin tone you want for your character. So for Snow White, for instance, I'm going to want a lighter complexion for her skin. So whenever I'm doing this for uh, a lighter complexion character, I'm trying to do it almost in the realm of pink as well. So you see this will have a pinkish hue to it. Uh, and then everything else should be fine. Blank is fine. So now all we're going to do is hit OK. And now we need to take this new texture which we're going to rename to snow white's uh, skin and we're going to take snow white skin and add it to the base color of our principal bsdf and you'll see now that it looks very plastic and like it doesn't have much going on so one thing we're going to do just while we still have the shading tab open is we're going to add pores to the skin and this will help us visualize what our characters are going to look like much better. So to add pores to the skin, I'm going to do Shift A and search. And I'm looking for the Voronoi texture. So there's the Voronoi texture. And now I'm going to do Shift A, search, and look for a float curve. And one last thing, we're going to do Shift A, search. And last but not least, we're going to want a bump. Okay, so we're going to mess with a couple of the settings for these nodes real fast. So for your Voronoi texture, instead of F1, what we're going to want to do is make it so it's smooth F1. And now I'm going to show you the order that we're going to load these suckers in to our normal over here on the principal BSDF. So the Voronoi texture, we're going to have the color go to the value on the float curve. And the value on the float curve is going to go to the height of our bump. 
and the normal on the bump is going to go to the normal on our principal BSDF. So you'll see what we have here is not something particularly pretty. <laughs> so one thing we're going to do is up our scale for a Voronoi texture. So it's so high up that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in 4000 and see how that looks. And believe it or not, this is roughly what we want. However, what you're seeing here is we have the height on our bump too great. And that's why we're getting this uh, odd depth of field effect. So we're going to go to our bump and the distance. And we're going to make it 0 0.002. And you'll see already that it has helped our character immensely. However, there's something even further we can do with our float curve. And that is by dragging it up and making it so it's almost a quarter of a circle. You'll see it minimizes those pores even further on your character. Now, perhaps you think you have your character's pores still too strong. Uh, so another thing you can do is just continue to lower your height. However, I do recommend that you still have your height still some something higher because most of the time you're not going to be right up on your character's face and you're going to want to see those pores from further away. However, if you are close up to your character, simply change that setting and do a render in that way. Okay, so now that we have pores on Snow White, let's mess with the materials itself. Instead of messing with the BSDF, inside of the shading tab I am going to go to layout and I'm going to directly go over to my material properties for Snow White skin so I'm going to first scroll to the very bottom of my material properties and I'm going to enable something called subsurface translucency and now I'm going to head back up and we are now going to look for this subsurface option right here so for our subsurface we're just going to up it just a bit however you'll notice that this effect isn't quite having what we want and that is because the subsurface color is still white so now i need to change the subsurface color to something a human would have which is a blood looking color so i'm going to change it to red and possibly even make it a slightly darker red because blood is a little darker and now depending on the size of your character you can adjust the level of this effect so snow white here for cloths and purposes is 13 meters tall so you'll see i have a very high subsurface effect However, if you have a shorter character that is more human height, like six feet tall, you're going to want to have this way lower than I currently have it for my character. So I'm going to bring this back up for Snow White. And you'll see she's already looking much better. So now one thing I'm not loving in the material settings is how glossy her skin is. So I'm just going to barely touch this roughness and bring it up just a bit to about 0.53 and I think that already that is pretty good for our character. So if you have noticed by the way, Snow White is bald in the back. However that is because viewport shading for my hair is off because it really bogs down my computer to have this much hair while I'm working. Uh, so if you're wondering why she's bald, that is the purpose behind that. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've finished more or less the shading portion of what we're trying to accomplish, now let's head over here to our texture paint. If you're looking for it in your texture paint, you're gonna go to this little picture icon and look for whatever you named that texture in your shader. So I have a snow white skin with a capital SK, and you'll see now I have a blank document to work with. Now one thing I want to know as you edit this document is to very often save your image to wherever you want your textures. Uh, that is because just saving your blend file isn't enough. You have to save your image as well as your blend file 
to consistently have your changes be saved. So I have a folder already uh, in my Blender Creations, Character Skins, and Textures. And I'm just going to keep the name the same and make sure that texture is saved. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a lipstick for Snow White that I think she would actually have. I do want to quickly add, uh, just in case you just noticed this pop up, um, I didn't have my Snow White character skin selected, so I made sure that that mesh was selected. And then over here in the right side of the screen here, I made sure that the texture paint was selected. And then I had my UV wrap uh, actually appear over on this side, which is something you're going to want to have while you're messing with your characters. So when it comes to lipstick, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have something uh, pretty red for Snow White because I think it's, <laughs> I think in the cartoon it says something like lips as red as blood, <laughs> which sounds pretty dark. <laughs> but let's just real quick add some lipstick. So what I have selected here is this draw brush and it just looks like a little paintbrush. And then right here, uh, if you see where my mouse is, I simply changed on my color wheel to this red. So the color on the left is your active color you have assigned to your brush. Okay, so let's try that red. And now I'm gonna just shrink down that radius. And one thing I'm also gonna make sure I have enabled by clicking my scroll wheel and just dragging it across, I'm gonna make sure I have my X axis symmetry enabled. So that means when I draw on my character, it will draw on both sides of my character rather than just when it's not enabled, it'll just draw on the one side. So now that I have my X axis enabled, I can fairly clearly see where my lip outline I did for my meshes. So I'm just going to do a very rough uh, outline of that real quickly. Okay, so there's kind of my very rough outline of my lips. So now you'll see right in here in the mouth, I can't quite get to these certain points with just my paintbrush. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do now is head over to the left hand half of your screen. And I'm just going to scroll way in here where I see the mesh for my lips is. And you're going to have to down your radius because the radius is much more finicky in this view mode. And I'm just going to use about seven pixels. And now I'm literally just going to color in the inside of this mouth area here. And what this is going to do is it's going to color on my mesh on the other side. You'll see I'm going to let go. And now that inner mouth area is as well colored in. However, I do see a couple areas I want to fix. So what I'm going to do now is head back over. I'm going to have my middle wheel, my middle scroll wheel selected and I'm going to click down and move this over again. And I'm going to select my color and use the eyedropper and make sure when you're trying to match skin tone to select the skin color on the left side of the screen. If I select the skin tone on this character, on the right hand side, you'll see I'm having a bunch of different skin tones. That is because it actually is accounting for the shadows in the scene. So I'm going to make sure and select the base skin tone. So now I'm going to do a couple just real fast edits to her lips to make it look how I think it should look. And I'm just going to real gently go over uh, a couple of these areas on the lips. So already to me, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little jittery in some of these areas. Okay, so that's something I'm happy with. So now I'm gonna make sure that I often save my texture that I'm working with as well as my blend file. And so I'm happy with what I've got for the lips now. Now what I wanna do is very subtly add some blush to this character's face. So one thing that is important that a lot of people don't realize is that 
uh, people don't just have massive amounts of blush. Some characters do, however, the most princesses specifically have a more subtle feel to them. So I'm going to turn the strength way down on my brush here, and I'm just going to mess with my radius a bit, and let's see how that is. So I'm actually happy with that strength amount, but I'm going to turn it down even more to have a little bit more control. And then I'm just going to hit the top of this nose a bit to give it a nice pink hue. Almost like she has a cold. <laughs> but you'll see once we do a couple more things that'll become even more subtle. And you're going to see also, occasionally when you're drawing directly onto your character, you're going to get these lines. And those happen whenever you're coloring on your character and the mesh is getting colored in different spots. For instance, if I color the tip of the nose, it'll also color this cheek behind the nose. So I'll show right here. And so now I've got this odd uh, coloring happening. So as long as it's subtle, it shouldn't matter a whole lot. And I'm just going to soften this later on, and I'll show you guys how I do that. So now let's kind of spread this even further up to some different areas. And let's put a little bit of pink on her cheeks. So something like that I already think looks pretty good. Um, however, one more thing that we're going to do to help this subtlety hit a little bit closer is we're going to grab this soften brush now. So usually for the soften brush you're going to want the setting set all the way to max for the strength. And now I'm just going to hit my character with this and soften some of these harsher lines that I've created. And what this is essentially doing is blending the underneath skin tone with the new reddish hue that I added on top of my character. And you'll see that already this is looking much, much better. However, I'm going to make sure I don't hit my lips with this because if I hit my lips with this, it'll soften the edges. And whether that's what you're going for or not, I'm personally not going for it this time. I want more defined edges for the lips of my character. And we're going to hit this nose just a bit more. And already that is a fairly nice looking makeup job for Snow White. So now I'm not going to focus on it too much, but I will say, so I have the collarbones and stuff. You can add a reddish hue to the collarbones, and that usually helps a lot for your character, and maybe even add a reddish hue for the elbows. Uh, just look at your body, like your knuckles and everything, anywhere that you see on yourself that has that kind of blood uh, subsurface scattering effect, maybe add it to your character. So now guys, you can see we've got a fairly nice looking character here. However, I did add freckles as I mentioned in the video and I actually have a separate video explaining how to add freckles. So just click on this video to check that out and it will run you through how to add freckles to any of your characters. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you guys. And if it was helpful, what you can do to help me the most is please leave a like, subscribe, or comment. Any of those three will have helped me more than you can know. Uh, and it shows the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed what you watched. So thanks again, you guys, and have an amazing day. Bye.